So we have two examples here where we're given the magnitude of a vector and its direction. And the direction is by giving us an angle that it forms with the positive x-axis. What we need to do is go from having this magnitude and this angle, this direction, to figuring out what the x and y components of this vector actually are. So like always, pause this video and, and see if you, can, if you can work through this on your own. All right, now let's, let's work through this together. And it's really just going to involve a, a little bit of trigonometry. So we want to break this vector down into its horizontal and its vertical components, or its x and y components. So I could draw its, I could draw its horizontal component just like this. So it's going to look something like, oh, let me draw it. I can do a better job than that. So it's going to look something like that. That's its horizontal component, or its x component. And then its vertical component is going to look something like this. It's going to look like that. That's its vertical component. And notice, if you add the horizontal component and the vertical component, you are going to get your original vector. Now, I've just constructed a right triangle. And in this type of a right triangle, I could just use actually some of my most basic trig definitions, or the, the simplest form, which is uh, the SOHCAHTOA definition of the trig functions. I might want to break into the unit circle definition later on. But if I want to figure out the magnitude of this base right over here, we see that that is adjacent to this 50 degree angle. It's not the hypotenuse. It's the other side that forms the angle. And so what trig function deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, we can just put a little reminder here. So, ka, toa. Well, cosine deals with adjacent over hypotenuse. So we could say that if I call if I call this x the length of our x component, we could say that the cosine, the cosine of 50 degrees of our angle, is going to be equal to the length of the adjacent side, x, over the length of our hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of the vector, over 4. And so if I want to solve for x, I just multiply both sides by 4. So I could get 4 times cosine of 50 degrees. 4 times cosine of 50 degrees is equal, is equal to x. Now what about the y component? So the y component, what is that going to be? Well, what? That, that side, the length of that side, is opposite to the angle, the 50 degree angle. So what trig function deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Well, that is sine. So we know that the sine of 50 degrees is going to be equal to y over the length of the hypotenuse, y over 4. And so we can multiply both sides by 4, and we get, we get 4 times sine of 50 degrees, sine of 50 degrees is equal to y. And so if I don't have a calculator, I could just write that this I could this vector I could write as if I write it in the component form, its x component is 4 cosine of 50 degrees and its y component is 4 sine of 50 degrees. And you might notice something interesting here. It I have cosine for of the angle, the angle we form with the positive x-axis. I have that for the x-coordinate. I have sine on the y-coordinate. And then I just multiply it by the magnitude of the vector. Can I always do that? Well, it turns out you can. And this comes out of the unit circle definition of the trig functions. In the unit circle definition of trig functions, cosine, if you have a unit circle, so a unit circle looks like this. A unit circle has a radius of 1. Cosine is the x-coordinate of where you intersect the unit circle, and sine is the y-coordinate. Or if you had a vector of magnitude 1, it would be cosine of that angle would be the x-component, for the, if we had a, a unit vector there in that direction. And then sine would be the y-component. But we don't have a unit vector. Our vector has a magnitude of 4. It's 4 times bigger than a unit vector. So each of the components are going to be 4 times bigger. So that's why we multiply the x, the cosine of 50 by 4 to get the x component. And we take the sine of 50, and we multiply it by 4 to get the y component. And that's going to come in handy when we think about this one over here. But we could get our calculator out and approximate what these are going to be. So let me get it out. Uh, where's my calculator? All right, there we go. So 50, I'm in degree mode. Got to make sure. So 50 degrees, I'm going to take the cosine, and I'm going to multiply it times 4. So times 4 
is equal to two, approximately 2.57. So this is approximately equal to 2.57 is our x component. And then our y component, our y component, if I take 50 degrees, and if I take the sine of it, and then multiply it by four, I get approximately 3.06. 3.06, and we see that over here. This x, this x component looks like it's a little more than two and a half, and this y component looks like it's slightly more than three. So it all worked out, even though this is kind of a, a sloppy hand-drawn graph. All right, now let's tackle this one, and this is interesting because this, the terminal point when we draw it in standard form, is in the second quadrant. So what would be the x and y components here? And you can immediately tell, because we're in the second quadrant, our x component is going to be negative, and our y component is going to be, is going to be positive. Well, we could just resort exactly to what we did just there. We could say, well, this vector, uh, this vector is going to be the magnitude, its x component is going to be its magnitude times the cosine of the angle that it forms with the positive x-axis, cosine of 135 degrees. And its y component is going to be the magnitude times the sine of the angle that it forms with the positive x-axis. And we'd be done. And we can evaluate each of these things. So we could get, let me get my calculator out again. So if we take 135 degrees, and if I take the cosine of that, cosine of that, and then multiply it by 10 times 10, I get approximately negative 7.07. So that's approximately negative 7.07. And then if I take the sine, and we're going to see something very similar. So 135 degrees, and I take the sine of it, I get positive 0.707. And so let me multiply that times the magnitude times 10 is equal to 7.07. .07. So 7.07. .07. And we see that over here. This is roughly, looks like it's a little more than 7. Looks like it's a little bit more than 7 in that direction. And we'd be done. And you might say, well, once again, how did this work? Well, if I had a unit circle, if I had a unit circle right over here, and if I had a unit vector, so its terminal point would sit on the unit circle that went in the exact same direction, that still formed 135 degrees, this point, this point right over here, it would have the coordinates cosine of 135 degrees, sine of 135 degrees. Let me make it a little bit more visible. This point right over here, cosine 135, sine of 135 would be its coordinates. Or for this unit vector right over here, going in that direction, its x component would be cosine of 135, and its y component would be sine of 135. Well, the vector that we care about has 10 times the magnitude of a unit vector in that direction. So its x component is going to have 10 times the magnitude, and so is its y component. And you could even resort to your Sokotoa definitions to figure this out. We could construct a right triangle if we like. We could say, we could say, here is, we could say, here is my x component. That is my x component. It's going to be something like that. And then there, and then my y component is going to look something like, uh, I'm drawing it a little bit imprecise, but I could draw that, let me draw that a little bit better. My y component is going to look something like that, right triangle. And so if I want this magnitude, the magnitude of this bottom side, I would say, well, look, I know, I know if this is, if this is 135 degrees, this angle right over here is supplementary to that, so it's a 45 degree angle. And so what trig function deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, cosine. So I could say cosine of 45 degrees is equal to the length of this. So let me just call the length of that, well, I don't know, let me just call it x. So the length of it, x over the hypotenuse, over 10. Multiply both sides by 10, you get 10 times cosine of 45 degrees is equal to x. And cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. So this is going to be 5 square roots of 2 is equal to x. And you might say, wait, wait, I thought this is supposed to be negative. Well, the way we just solved it right now with our right triangle, we just figured out the magnitude of the side. And then we would just have to reason, OK, well, but we're not, going, we're not going 5 square roots of 2 to the right. We're going 5 square roots of 2 to the left. So the magnitude in the x direction or not, not the magnitude, our x component, I should say, is going to be negative 5 square roots of 2. 
And you could do the exact same reasoning to say, well, 10, cosine of, 10 sine of 45 degrees is going to give us the magnitude of the, of the y component. And that's actually going to be our y component. So the same exact thing. This is going to be 10 sine of 45 degrees, which is 5 square roots of 2. And if we took our calculator out, they would evaluate to approximately these things right over there.